The, the white paper talks about stepping up plans for no deal. And um, uh, so far there appears to have been some reticence about um, uh, making announcements about what is being prepared for in the event of, of no deal. So what's the basis for deciding when to announce of what is being done in preparation for no deal? Well, I think, I mean, there are two, uh, two um, approaches that we've, or two aspects that we've looked at. The first is obviously the work that needs to be done uh, by the government in determining the uh, preparations. And then the second is the point at which it is important to be able to ensure that others outside government who would need to be involved uh, are able to have the information that they need. I was going to... Um, Look, we're not yet on the, uh, uh, the debate later this afternoon, but the Secretary of State for exiting the EU will be um, setting out today that over August and September we're going to be releasing a number of technical uh, notifications um, to set out what UK citizens and businesses need to do in a no-deal uh, scenario, so making much more public awareness of the, uh, of the preparations. Um, we imagine there are going to be around 70 of those technical notices that, would, uh, that will be issued. So that's, if you like, taking a next step. The Cabinet did agree that we needed to step up our no-deal preparations, but this is part of those no-deal preparations, is making those technical notices available to those who need to, obviously need to know uh, that information. Thank you. So if we're, um, uh, you ruled out the, the option of negotiating an FTA with the European Union because they won't negotiate with us on the basis of, the, without the backstop, they won't countenance an FTA without the backstop. That's correct, isn't it? Well, yes, if I may just, but this is where language is, um, is important. Um, we, that if we say, if we talk about a free trade agreement, then the European Union has a single concept of what a free trade agreement is. Mm -hmm. So it's like Canada, that's a free trade agreement. Mm -hmm. What we're talking about in here is a much wider and more ambitious overall partnership with them. Mm -hmm. So obviously as it, as it, at its heart is a free trade area with the, with the EU, um, but that's why we don't use the, word, the, the term free trade agreement. But you're right, the two options that were on the table from the EU were on the one hand EEA plus free movement, customs union, um, and which I think would, yeah. would not I, reflect I the vote. And on the other was a free trade agreement that actually was less good than the Canadian free trade agreement, but with effectively the border down the Irish Sea. One of the reasons you've given for not going for a Canada plus 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 free trade agreement is that they won't negotiate with us on the basis of, the, of Northern Ireland remaining in the same customs area as the rest of the United Kingdom. They won't do that, will they? they the, their proposal was for a free trade split. agreement which, which actually did. split Northern yeah. Ireland off okay, the Okay, so record. if we have a WTO Brexit, <coughs> with or without an agreement, a, a, a withdrawal agreement, can you give us an assurance that it will be on the basis of a WTO Brexit that is for the whole of the United Kingdom and there is no question of splitting Ireland from the rest of the United Kingdom under those circumstances? Well, I have been, um, uh, I've said on many, many occasions that one of the uh, targets, one of the aims that I have in relation to uh, the negotiations that we have is to ensure that we retain the United Kingdom together. Uh, I believe that is important. I believe our union is very precious. So I will certainly be working to ensure that we are able to maintain so the United Kingdom so, okay, together. Well, that, that As I said in, in response to the fine. earlier so that, questions, that's fine. In, an, in a no-deal scenario, of course, we will have to consider what action yeah. we take. Others will have to consider what actions they take. The no-deal planning, or the WTO Brexit planning, is planning for an invisible frontier in Northern Ireland. The uh, planning that is taking place at the moment, the issue of, as the issue of the, uh, what happens in relation to that, is an element that we have to, to be looking at as we're undertaking the no deal planning. The preparatory work that is being undertaken um, is being undertaken across a whole range of departments okay, and the whole the range of very ways. Simple, Prime Minister. But we have, but well, uh, and I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm being careful in, 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 in answering because I've already answered a question but like this is, and I don't want there to be any misunderstanding between the answers that I'm giving to the same question. But is, is the government planning for a no? frontier, invisible customs frontier in Northern Ireland, because you have to, that's part of the no deal planning. As we look at the no deal planning, one of the elements, one of the issues that we have to look that's at quite yes, is, is, is one of the elements that we are looking at as part of our no deal planning is that whole question of, of the border in Northern Ireland. Okay, I don't think we're going to get any further on that one. Um, 
and for matters such as the regulation of chemicals, aviation safety, food safety, and indeed medicines, which the House of Commons voted on yesterday, presumably planning, no deal planning includes draft legislation in order to provide for regulation of those products in our own market. And when are we going to see that legislation? No, no deal planning will, um, in, does involve looking at the, uh, legis any legislative requirements that are needed for these points. There is, um, I don't have a timetable for that, those any le required legislation at the moment. We have already put through some <coughs> legislation that is relevant in a no deal scenario in terms of our, our preparations um, for uh, leaving the EU. Uh, the, the, but there is work that is undertaken, for example, in, in the relation to EASA, in terms of ensuring you would be looking, for example, uh, there at pro possibly, probably a set of bilateral agreements, um, and the Department of Transport is, is looking at that. But I mean, uh, um, we will have to probably use the provisions under the Withdrawal, EU Withdrawal Act. Um, and we'll have to have regulations under the, that, that Act in order to replace those functions. And, and, if, and let's hope that they give us those bilateral agreements because it would be very destructive and vindictive if they, would, if they did not. But um, when, can, when do you think we will see those draft regulations or draft acts of parliament, draft bills? Well, there are some of the... Um, uh, look, there's going to be a whole range of um, exit... Uh, uh, there'll be a whole range of legis uh, primary and secondary legislation that will be being brought forward over, over time, obviously. There are a number of, um, as I said, we've already passed, obviously, the withdrawal out, the Nuclear Safeguards Bill, the Sanctions Bill. We're expecting to lay approximately um, 40 EU exit SIs um, uh, before recess. This is, the, the, the work is ongoing. There is a significant number of SIs that need to be laid in all of these areas. Thank you very much, Prime Minister.